Hi, Eric Simpson here, an online weight loss specialist coach working with busy professional women over 40 who are looking to lose weight and tone up without having to count calories or spend hours exercising every day or trying to be 100% perfect in pursuit of their goal. In my coaching video today, I'm going to be speaking about how to get motivated to lose weight when you feel depressed about it. Now, I'm not talking about clinical depression here. Having said that, the example I'm going to be doing today or using today is a client of mine named Marie who actually was clinically depressed when she got started and definitely felt like this. But what I would say to you is if you are clinically depressed and you are thinking about weight loss, then I'll definitely speak to your medical advisor before you undergo any sort of weight loss program at all. Because I know how serious it is and I know how debilitating depression can be. I say I've worked with many women now who are on medication for depression and it's not the easiest thing in the world to navigate your way around, not only just getting through day-to-day -day life, but then adding into the mix weight loss as well uh, can seem somewhat overwhelming. So the example I'm going to give you today or the case that I'm going to share with you today is really me taking a 10,000 foot view look at this and whilst I may make it sound like what Marie did was pretty straightforward and easy because I'm just going through uh, a simple uh, recount of what she did, believe you me it took a number of months and a lot of effort on Marie's behalf to not only do the, the nutritional things, the physical things but also and probably the biggest challenge were the mental obstacles that she had to overcome in order to get the results she wanted. So just wanted to kind of say that so you don't think that what I'm presenting here is, oh, it's like magic, it happens overnight. It really doesn't. Uh, there were many a times where me, me and Marie had some real in-depth conversations about where she was and she had to work through that. So just to make that clear. So Marie, a lady I spoke about, when she spoke to me initially, I didn't know this at the time, but she was clinically depressed. She was ringing me when she initially made contact with me from a hospital car park contemplating uh, a cosmetic surgery procedure. She was sat in the car with her husband. I didn't realize this until many, many months later when she told me that that's where she'd actually run from, was from a car park. And also, it had taken her several months before she made the call. She'd looked at the program that I offer, I kind of dismissed it out of hand because she felt that she knew a lot about exercise. She was a biology teacher. She knew a lot about nutrition. In fact, she was doing a, a particular exercise program, which sadly had created some injuries for her. She damaged her knee and I think she'd hurt her back as well. So when she contacted me, she was not in the best place at all. However, she did make the phone call. And the first thing that she did was when we got speaking, and I guess before we even spoke was she had made a decision in her head, and I mean a real decision that she was gonna do something about weight loss. Now, what do I mean by a real decision? Well, you will know as well as I, because I have done this myself, where I've said in the past, we're about to lose some weight, right, that's it, I'm gonna lose some weight. I make a big hullabaloo about it, and guess what, within a day or two, then the whole thing's come crashing down, it doesn't actually work. The times where I have had to lose weight and done my best are the times when I make a decision at a quiet time. Not when I've read something necessarily, not when I've watched something like even this video. It's when I have a quiet moment and I just reflect upon the situation I'm in and where I want to be. And I believe that's exactly what Marie did. She sat quietly, reflected and made a decision that she was going to lose weight. The next step was, how was she going to do it? But the first thing that you need to do is make that decision that you are going to lose weight and it's non-negotiable because when you have that sort of resolute decision in place, then pretty much everything else falls to the wayside. This becomes a priority for you and it will get done. If you don't make that sort of decision, then it will always fall down the list of things you have to do until eventually it doesn't get done and you end up back at square one, probably putting on more weight and feeling worse than what you did do when you even thought about trying to lose weight. So that was the first thing she did was make a decision. The next thing we did when we got together and sat down and spoke was she'd made the decision she wanted to lose weight. We then broke that down to three sections because weight impacts three different areas. Area number one she wanted to have a big impact on was her body image. She wanted to improve how she looked um, in clothes generally, which is a big thing that a lot of people want to do. So that was the first thing she did. She then wanted to improve her health. She had particularly high cholesterol levels. So she wanted to bring that down. Then the third thing she wanted to do was improve her cycling. She was a big cyclist, so that was her hobbies. You may have different hobbies. Yours might be gardening, it could be walking, but whatever it is, you can break it down to these three areas, and that's what I suggest you do. 
you break your weight loss down to three definite areas. So you get some real clarity and some meaning. It doesn't, it's not then just about, I wanna lose weight. It's doing it for specific reasons. We then set the weight loss goal. What was the amount you wanted to lose? And then we attached a time frame to it. And this is where a lot of people tend to go wrong. They tend not to set a specific amount. They say, I wanted to lose some weight. And when do you wanna lose it by? I, I, I don't know, I just wanna lose the weight. Well, do, these two things can really help to shape your behavior as you move forwards because when you have a specific amount of weight and a time frame, that's gonna directly impact your behavior, how you think, how you act, how you move, how you eat. All the things that are required for weight loss are gonna be directly impacted by you setting an amount of weight and a time frame. The next thing we did was we got to work taking some small, consistent steps. And I'll emphasize small because if you take big steps, chances are you're gonna become feel or you, you'll feel overwhelmed and when you feel overwhelmed you'll stop and we need to be consistent because doing it one day and then not doing it for two or three days you undermine your own confidence when you do small steps consistently you start to build your confidence not only will you see the results but you'll see the confidence grow inside yourself because you now know you can rely upon yourself to take these small consistent steps the next thing we did was, once we decided all that was, let's put some structure around it, let's make it progressive, and let's have some accountability, and that's what we did. And once we got this in place, as you can see on the screen, she was able to achieve a 57 pound weight loss result. She was wearing nicer clothes, you know, she dropped several clothes sizes, dropped her cholesterol levels, and improved her cycling no end. So again, just to reiterate, I'm not for one second suggesting that if you are feeling depressed about your weight, especially if you're clinically depressed, that this is as easy as I've just presented it there. Marie didn't go from being 57 pounds heavier to suddenly being um, 57 pounds lighter and having this new sort of lifestyle, uh, improved lifestyle in terms of what she could do, what she wanted to do, what she was prepared to do. It didn't happen overnight. It took some time, it took some effort and some energy on her, uh, on her behalf. So just in closing then, to sort of, I guess, really summarize, the, the main thing that I think that Marie did was she made a real decision that she's gonna lose the weight. And that's what I think you need to do as well, is make that real decision. And that happens at the quiet moments, not when all the hullabaloo's going on. It really is a calmness that you'll sense that you've decided. And when you get to that place, then whether it's working with somebody like me or a slimming club or a trainer, whatever it is, that's when you need to start to find and look for the person that's gonna help you on that journey as Marie did in, in, in her case, it happened to be me. In your case, it may not be me, it could be somebody else. But the first thing is make that decision. And I definitely recommend you bookmark this video because when you're ready to start and you think you're ready, just double check with this video again to make sure you, you, you you've got everything squared away in your own mind because say if you are feeling depressed or you are clinically depressed it, it's a big step to take you know losing weight takes commitment it's not as easy as just and in fact i never say to clients count calories or anything like that or do lots of exercise because it's not about that it's about getting it right in your head first and deciding in your head first and then taking the action steps i've sort of highlighted in this video so i'd love to hear what your thoughts are on how to get motivated to lose weight when you feel depressed about it? You know, what are the things that maybe you've tried in the past? Do you have any suggestions about how you can move into that place of positivity? I'd love to hear them, you know, feel free to comment below. If you'd like to have a conversation about your own weight loss, uh, there'll be a link in the description below where you can contact me. We can have a free, no obligation conversation about your situation, about what weight you wanna lose. And I can explain a bit about how I work with clients and if we think there's a possibility that we could work together, then we'd arrange a separate call. So there's nothing to buy on that initial call. It's just really about fact finding and seeing whether or not there's a possibility where we may be able to work together. So, so there's a link in the description below. You can click on that and book yourself in for a, a day and a time that best suits you. And don't forget, if you haven't already done so and you wanna receive more of these videos, then also hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when I release my next uh, coaching video. Until then, take very good care and bye for now.